We got some cringe video game takes to talk about. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, let me just show you the emote because it's really, really great. And um, I actually love it a whole bunch. Hey, Ninjafs, how you doing? How you doing? Let me just show you the brand new emote. It's really cute. Right here, right here, right here. We got the cringe mama. Look at this. Whoops. Why can't that be opened? There we go. Look at this. Look at this. Cringe mama. We have the cringe mama. We have our very own cringe mama emote. And we also have the very nice. We got the very nice. Look at that. Very nice. Both of these will be, uh, it might take me a bit to get them working on the screen. All the emotes should be working on the screen now. Um, besides those two, for some reason. I'm guessing it's a caching issue. Don't worry so much about it. You got your first imposter win? Oh, in, um, in fucking Among Us? Among Us? Be me. Cringing. True. Cringing. I'm cringing. All right. So we got those two new emotes. Very exciting. Um, nah, I don't think I, I don't think I want to give Fnatic any more attention. Like, the guy is ser seriously has some anger problems, so I don't, I don't think he needs any more attention than we already currently have. Um, new emotes, very fun, very exciting. Um, it's okay, you don't have to be sad. I just, you know, kind of an angry. See, look at that! Look, look! Pompo and the Thinky Mama are showing up. The Cringe Mama just isn't. We could get a- wait, 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 wait! That might be a fun one. Yeah, 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 Posadas John, we actually went over that yesterday. It was wild. It was wild. You have a feeling that Biden is going to win? We can hope. Esports being toxic? Never heard of that before. It is true. Very toxic. Yeah, the wait, wait, wait would be good. Maybe it could just be like a long emote that says like in rainbow letters, like wait, 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 wait. That might be kind of fun. We do need a five head. Um, That's a good idea. We'll need a five head demon at some point. I got to have some ideas for the future. Because next month, I'm going to launch, hopefully, a whole bunch of new ones. We got the peanuts. Look, we got peanuts. Wait, peanuts works? Why the fuck is peanuts working, but the other one's not? Hmm, how strange. Very well, then. XQC? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know much about him, but I don't know much about him. So, here's what we're doing tonight. First, I have to talk about a really cringy take that's been going around on uh, Twitter right now. Then... Then, yeah, the peanuts is the only sub-only emote. It's the only one. I used it to replace the dicks from Vosh's um, one. Although you might still be able to find the dicks emote if you're if you're crafty. There's a couple of secret emotes. See if you can find them all. There you go. Look at that. There's the dicks. Dicks isn't that secret. But you can all of you who are in the know, it'll show. It, it's a way of virtue signaling that you know what Vosh is. That you know who Vosh is. Big thinky. Um... Yeah, the take is real interesting, and it's really cringe, and we're going to talk about it, and we're also going to talk about some of this guy's other takes, which have also been cringe. Um, and, uh, wait, is there lag? I hope there's not lag. There's no lag on my end. I'm hoping it's not lagging too much. We can see, though. Um, a little bit of lag? Hmm. That's weird. Maybe refresh the site. I don't know. It shouldn't be. It might be on Twitter's end. I don't know. Wait, really? Oh, that sucks. Wow, damn, damn ninjafs, I didn't know that, that's actually kind of pretty toxic, um, and then we're going to be covering the debates, but we have a special friend coming to join us, Vivian Wolf is actually going to come cover the debates with us, isn't that fucking exciting, we like Vivian Wolf around here, right, so Vivian is going to be coming on, and we're going to laugh at it, just like last time, and we might, we might get Dylan in too, Dylan might be coming too, he's on break, so I told him, don't feel pressured, because I know you're on break, um, but if you feel like it, come by, and Dylan said he might come by, so we might get Dylan, very nice, lag, true, we love Dylan, we love Viv, it's gonna be fun as fuck, these debates are gonna be fun, um, yeah, so let's talk about these cringe takes, without any further ado, without any further fucking bouncing around and whatnot, let's talk about some of this cringe take, so I got them all up and ready and prepared. Here we go. Here's the one. This is the take that did it. This is the take that made Twitter very angry. Very, very angry. 
and they should be because it's a terrible take. It starts here. Streamers worried about getting their content pulled because they used music they didn't pay for should be more worried by the fact that they're streaming games they didn't pay for as well. It's all gone as soon as publishers decide to enforce it. The real truth is that streamers should be paying the developers and publishers of the games they stream. They should be buying a license like any real business and paying for the content they use. couple problems with this take right listen simp i would say i think that that's bait too but there's a problem though wait the, the in society isn't on here what where'd the in society go uh oh maybe i deleted it by accident uh forgive me i'll i have sinned i will replace it don't worry we'll replace it um however here's the reason why i don't think it's bait ready Creative director at Google Stadia. Previously, creative director on Journey to Savage Planet, Far Cry 4, Assassin's Creed 3, Spore, Sims 2, etc. This guy is a leader at Google. This guy is a leader at Google. But guess what? I know you might be convinced it's still bait, but let me tell you. This guy's had a lot of bad takes. I can tell you that much. I can tell you he's had a lot of bad takes. And we're going to talk about those. Um, we're going to talk about those. He's a leech. True. What an absolute bullshit take beyond all measure. None of my coworkers in the industry think any of this nonsense. Yeah, that's true. It my my part one of my partners works in the game industry. Worked on a bunch of cool games. Still works in the game industry now. And all of her followers and interactives have been dunking on this guy all day. As it turns out, devs hate this take. They hate this take. And the reason why, I mean, there's a couple of obvious reasons, right? Let's let's pop it back up on here. Oh, oh, oh yeah, he followed it up with this, by the way. Amazing to me that people are upset at someone saying that the creators of content should be allowed to make some of the money from other people using their content for profit. Uh, based, based... Jason Schreier, everybody know base, uh, fucking Jason Schreier. If not, why don't I follow him on this account? You should follow Jason Schreier, one of the most influential, influential video game labor writers currently right now. So good, good person to follow if you're interested in the world of video games, which I am. Um, I don't know. Maybe you're getting flack because you're picking this particular battle in a world where C-suite executives make $30 million a year and devs don't get any royalties, so they'd never see any of that streaming money in the first place. True, Jason! True! Really true! Now, there's a couple of other problems with this, right? So, first of all, the idea that streamers don't pay for their games is kind of hilarious, right? Like... I mean, sure, there's probably some streamers who've pirated their games, but at the end of the day, most streamers buy their games off of Steam or the Epic Store or whatever, or they play free-to-play games like League of Legends. Wouldn't that suck if you, if as a streamer, you had to pay licensing fees to play a free-to-play game like League of Legends? There's probably significantly less streamers than, than pirating than the general populace. Yeah, because we don't want to get in any trouble, ever. You know what I mean? Um, it's wild. This take is so stupid. Not only would it destroy streaming, but it would hurt devs. Have Have any of you heard of this, um, this game called, um, fuck, what's it called? Um, we were just talking about it. it it's this little game... Um, a really famous politician played it a couple nights ago. There's these astronauts and they hit each other over the head with stuff. Um, what's it called? What is it called? Oh yeah. Fall Guys. That's the one. Oh no, no. Just kidding. It's Among Us. It's Among Us. It's Among Us. Among Us. Did you know that Among Us came out in 2018? That game has been out for two motherfucking years. Two fucking years. And it's just kind of been quiet. It was streamers picking it up and popularizing it that made them 
So much money. So much money. Oh, yes, I've had plenty of coffee. I also have a soda here. I guess AOC owes that guy money. Yeah, nobody heard of it because it was a it was a quiet game with a quiet launch, and streamers found it and promoted it. You know that game Monster Train? You know a lot of streamers have been playing that game on stream and promoting it, and now it's doing really fucking good? Yeah, it's almost like streamers playing your game to their audience does nothing but good. It only makes things better for you. And saying that you should have to pay um, licensing fees so streamers can play your game on stream is literally shooting yourself in the foot. There's only one person who benefits from this. Executives. That's it. That's it. That's the only one. That's the only fucking one. And games aren't like movies. You know, games aren't like something that you sit down and watch for an hour and then you're done. So like, and I think there are still huge problems with movie licensing, obviously. However, it's a little weird that you would say like a game that takes like anywhere from 20 to 80 hours to play through would be an experience you would want to limit to ha like licenses like you would for a movie. It's completely stupid. One of the dumbest takes. But guess what? This isn't his first dumb take either. This guy has failed upwards for his entire career it seems and constantly uses his giant platform and position of creative power to make the dumbest takes imaginable. Let's take a look at one of them. Y'all remember this from a few years ago? This was all the way back in 2014. Remember this? Remember 2014? Anybody remember this one? Ubisoft in trouble over comments about female characters. Let's read. Shortly after Ubisoft upset many Assassin's Creed fans by saying that it had abandoned its plan to have female characters in its new game's co-op multiplayer mode, the company returned with another controversial explanation about the absence of women in those games. This one focused on Far Cry 4. Speaking in an interview with Polygon, Alex Hutchinson... Wait, where'd he go? Alex Hutchinson. Yep, same Alex Hutch Hutchinson. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, same guy. Alex Hutchinson, the game's director, said that developers were inches away from allowing players to choose between a man or a woman as a co-op buddy in the up upcoming shooter's multiplayer. What stopped them? Hutchinson says it was purely a workload issue. The team didn't have a female reader for the character at its disposal, nor did it have all the animations in place. He went on to say in the future, moving forward, this sort of stuff will go away once developers settle into new and improved technologies. We did our best, Hutchinson's included. It's frustrating for us as it is for everyone else. It's not a big switch that you can just pull and get done. Ubisoft was, Ubisoft's best wasn't good enough for a lot of fans, though. Before Hutchinson's comments were first published, many gamers disappointed with the company's earlier statements about Assassin's Creed Unity had already taken to Twitter with the hashtag women are too hard to animate in a widespread effort to call bullshit on the reasoning behind leaving female characters out of that game. Yes, it's this guy. This is the guy. The women are too hard to put into our game so we uh and we don't have enough money on their multiple million dollar games so they just decided yeah we don't need to have a, a fucking women in the game yeah we don't need to have a woman in the game what what's 50 percent of approximately of the population of earth who cares about those people right femoids am i right yeah, me too. I'm glad that I've become easier to... Like, likewise, Marinara. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Femoids are very difficult. What can I say? As a femoid, uh, I am very difficult to animate. I have a body um, that doesn't look like a man's. Um, I have um, a voice that doesn't sound like a man. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's just real hard, you know? You meant harder? Oh, I see what you meant. I thought you meant like, I don't know. I don't know what you meant, actually. I, I think I read it the same way you were thinking it. It's okay. Females. Yeah, this is the females guy. But guess what? But guess what?
it gets worse. Sorry. Sorry if I held there for a second. There were some people walking by and it was like shaking the, the world because there were a bunch of kids running by. It's just fine. It gets worse. It gets even worse. Because watch this. He wrote an article. Alex Hutchinson, game journalists exhibit subtle racism. AC3 creative director says the press is biased in favor of Japanese developers. Yeah, that's right. This is the guy who claimed that games journalists were racist against Americans. Let's go. Let's find out more. Alex Hutchinson, the creative director of Assassin's Creed 3, has said that he believes games journalists give Japanese developers an early ride, an easy ride, exhibiting a subtle racism which is condescending to those who it favors. This is literally the bigotry of low expectations, a old racist meme, by the way, that this guy's trotting out. I don't think he meant to, but, but yeah. Speaking in an interview with CVG, Hutchinson expressed his frustration with the press treatment of what he sees as substandard storytelling in Japanese games. Asked, oh, oh, the irony, the irony of Ubisoft talking about, to anyone, about substandard storytelling. L literally, holy shit. Like, ha have any of you played Far Cry New Dawn? That game is one of the dumbest games I've ever played in my entire life. Like, as in, it was so dumb, I played through the entire thing with my partner, and we had a really fun time because it was so stupid and broken. It was that stupid and broken. Wild. Yeah, yeah, Assassin's Creed, known for its renowned and complex story. Oh, hey, Grime Dango. I, was, I did this whole segment with you in mind, so I'm glad you're here. Whether you whether you wanted to watch or not, it wasn't like for you. It was like inspired by you. We're reading the uh, yeah you did I know yeah yeah you did yes yes. Uh, all credit goes to Grime Dango for finding this story. I couldn't find this one. I was l searching for it. I thought it was a Gama Sutra article originally, but it was not. Far Cry Five. I didn't play Far Cry Five, to be honest. Yeah, Ubisoft st subpar storytelling. Also, Ubisoft makes the Assassin Creed and Far Cry New Dawn games. Yeah. Oh no, Otona no Aji. Oh no. Oh yeah, the Far Cry 5 ending gets fucked gets even worse when you play New Dawn because it's a because New Dawn is a retcon kind of. Yeah, spoiler the earth earth gets nuked. Yeah, oh, I I remember this now. I I forgot. I was thinking of Far, for some reason I was getting Far Cry 4 and 5 mixed up. I I didn't play 5 all the way through. I watched someone play through it, so I remember the story now. Um my god. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue the story. I just had to take a second there. So he's mad at substandard storytelling in Japanese games. Asked about why Nintendo is able to endlessly iterate the same franchises multiple times in each and every generation, Hutchinson replied, You want my real answer? I think there's a subtle racism in the business, especially on journalists' side, where Japanese developers are forgiven for doing what they do. I think it's condescending to do this. Imagine, imagine thinking that all of Japanese game developers are Nintendo. That Nintendo, so you want to talk about subtle racism. Imagine thinking, going, yeah, the Japanese game industry, all those hundreds of thousands of people making games. Oh, Nintendo. Nintendo is the is Japan. Nintendo is the Japanese game industry. Anyway. Oh my god. Just think about how many Japanese games are released where their stories are literally gibberish. Literally gibberish. There's no way you could write that with a straight face. And the stories and the journalists say, oh, it's brilliant. What? What? Gibberish? Sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm wrong here. Gibberish, unintelligible, intelligible, or meaningless speech or writing. Nonsense. Yeah, he literally doesn't understand Japanese and is going, oh, they're speaking some wibbly wobbly language. This is literally racism. Well, I know, I know, but he is saying that. He doesn't mean that, but he is saying that. 
then Gears of War comes out, and apparently it's the worst written narrative in a game ever. It'll take, I'll take Gears of War over Bayonetta anytime. What? What? It's patronizing to say, oh, those Japanese stories, they don't really mean what they're doing. What? Hutchinson's slightly off-topic outburst is unlikely to make him any friends in the upper echelons of Ubisoft's management, although it smacks more than a little of poor choice of phrasing. Yeah, that's a way, that's an understatement. Nonetheless, he seemed unfazed and left the comments unmitigated. Instead of moving on to talk about what AC's 3 story would, wouldn't be, to be about, historical accuracy. Well, I, maybe I messed up that sentence. The best thing about it was that people had a view. He continued referencing public discussion of Assassin's Creed setting and story. That was perfect. People were debating it. We had no interest in writing about the Patriots or the Defender of the King and Country. I mean, those are very boring stories. It's funny to see these debates online. And we just gave up trying to communicate on it because the game will speak for itself. What? Yeah. So, um... So, yeah. Um... Yeah, yeah, this guy is kind of a, a king of hot takes. He's kind of bad at, like, he's kind of bad at communicating. And this guy is a fucking creative director at Google. Failing upwards. That's what it is. Failing upwards. Listen, say what you want about Bayonetta, but I think Bayonetta's cool as fuck. So we're all getting Stadia now? Yeah, damn, he's doing a great job a advocating that brand. I don't know, maybe they put him in there to, like, like, poison pill the project. I don't know. Hard to say.